So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the February uh, Hong Kong Flat Telex Society and Hong Kong Study Circle joint meeting uh, sponsored by the Federation of Inter-Asian Philately. Um, it, we, we are so happy to see everybody uh, uh, to be here. Um, at this month, uh, we have we introduced a, a special theme again, like like some previous uh, meetings. Um, and uh, as somebody once somebody suggested, postal stationery, which is a, obviously a vast subject. Um, you can talk about uh, uh, postal stationery as a, as a mean postal stationery, or you can talk about uh, usages, etc. Uh, it, it it should be quite interesting. Um, but uh, obviously, um, uh, uh, you know, you, you, know so you, you need you need time to prepare uh, for for this kind of meetings, uh, these specialist meetings. Anyway, uh, I have uh, several volunteers uh, to do the presentation, and uh, one of them, of course, is um, uh, uh, Susan Susan Crew uh, from the UK, and uh, she's going to uh, show us some uh, interesting uh, postal stationery uh, used at the treaty ports. So Susan, would you like to uh, kick off first? Yes. So let me um, stop sharing my screen. Right, there you go. Okay. First of all, an apology for those who were hoping to see China overprint postal stationery, because none of it is. But uh, what I am showing is there's two different displays. The first one is postal stationery sent between British post offices in China. And there's a short one at the end. It's stationery used by the GPO in Hong Kong on either it's a show and ask rather than a, a show and tell. So if we start off with the postal stationery sent between British post offices in China. We've got a one cent card here sent from Amoy to Shanghai in 1890 with the straight line Amoy cancel. Oops, sorry, I've gone. I do like these postal stationery cards because you get such a lot of information from the back. This one is a request for a book and J.A. Ott signs his name and he's sorry because he hasn't sent his hospital report. I think he must have been suffering a little bit because if you look at the date at the bottom, it's a more August 22nd when in fact he sent it in September. Mm. There's a picture of the hospital in which he worked and above of him and the hospital staff. Is, is that, uh, Susan? Um, yes. Meandro, is that, is that actually typed? The type it's typed, yes. Yes, so, it's been typed. So the yes, card it's unusual. is quite stiff. So, so, so the, you have to actually wrote, uh, put it through a typewriter. It's so, put it, yes, yes, it has. Yeah, but the, it, it's fine. It survived quite well. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, another one, Hamoy to Shanghai, sent it a year later with a different Hamoy cancel, the one with the broken circumference at four o'clock. Yeah. And again, it's got the Shanghai arrival cancel. This is a third one, this time an Amoy one sent to Way Highway. Now, the previous two cards seem to have been sent direct to Shanghai, but this one, for some reason, was sent via Hong Kong. So it's gone from Amoy, south to Hong Kong, and then sent up north to Wei Highway. Why it wasn't sent direct, I don't know, unless there was something about the timetabling of the steamers. 
but that struck me as being rather unusual. Canton to Shanghai, straight line, Canton, as you would expect by Hong Kong. Quite a number of these are either from or to missionary establishments. This one, 94, a year later, a different Canton Council with the asterisk and the Shanghai arrival. Slightly different one, but I couldn't identify it on Proud's listings. The nearest mm. I could get was the web type F3. It seemed a different size to the Proud one that was nearest to it, D13. Hoi Hao to Shanghai. And this one has the strange index letter C. Mm facing downwards right. and a message wanting copies of child paper and illustrated news and Mandarin primers. And one registered envelope, Liu Kung Tao to Shanghai with the four cents for the postage. I particularly like this one because of the name of the sender, D. Clark and Co. And D. Clark, as far as I'm aware, was the postal agent at Way Highway. And he's oh. obviously writing for a supply of meat, presumably for the forces, because he supplied the Navy. And this is the back of it with the Shanghai Arrival Council, 1914. Now that brings me to the end of that first display. If anybody wants to say something about that before I go on to the next one, I don't know. Susan, um, yes? the Amoy card, I think there was, there was literally daily shipping from Fuzhou Amoy to Hong Kong. Maybe that's the reason why there's mm. more steamers going south before it yeah. went north. So that and might perhaps, be the reason. And perhaps some of those going north to Way Highway wouldn't have stopped at the morning. Yeah. That was right. all I could think of. But yeah. it did seem strange to send it so far out of its way. Yeah. Excuse me, you can even check uh, which ship actually uh, took the, the postcard. If you just go to the, uh, the China, either China Mail or the China Daily Press, uh, 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 online version, online edition of the Hong Kong uh, uh, news newsletter library. Yeah, no, and, I must but, have but, a but you really have to. It's quite tedious because you have to just go through all the newspaper. Well, no, not actually all, but you just look look at the, the date within the say two or three days, and you, you probably can find out there's a ship which actually, one it went yeah, on. Yeah. And yeah. and not all ships actually carry mail because the, some of them has a postal contract. You can actually see if you if you look at the this column called the the, the post office they they say the, the post office and a notice or something and you can find out that which ship has a post post office contract that 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 carry the mail so you can actually it, it's, it's 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 tedious but but it's, it's quite fun actually uh, uh, yeah. finding the ship that carried the letter yeah I must have a go at that yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have right. time, if you have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, but, that's how Richard Whittington got all the information from. Yes, oh, yes, he's very good. <laughs> he, at must that. Have, he, must have went, he, he must have gone through the, new, the newspaper thousands of times to actually yeah. check the ships and things like that. Yeah, but an excellent a marvelous collection you've got. Ah, mm. Yeah, right. I like, the, I like the Liu Kong Tao one. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ahoy yeah, house. nice one. That. With the, yeah. with the inverted, uh, with, the, uh, with the, the, the index C facing down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I was lucky to get that one. Yeah. Does Charles make a record of it? Because Charles wrote the article on it. I, yeah. No. Oh, Susan? Yeah. I, I don't maybe. know. Yeah. I think yeah, maybe will we should. Be less than 10, but I don't have uh, the detailed record for one by one. Maybe yeah. I do. Maybe I do it later. later okay. Mm -hmm. Right, if I move on to the, the other one, it's a short one. As I said, it's, it's stationary rather than postal stationary. 
It's a return to controller of posts labels, and it's a plea for help. It's cover from Bermuda, Hamilton to Hong Kong, 26th of May, 1955. An attractive enough looking cover, but nothing special. On the back, it shows that it's arrived on the 6th of June. And then it was forwarded to the Land Forces headquarters and stamped with the BPO 945 on the 7th of June. But what I draw your attention to is the label, the GPO label. Oops, my, my, oops sorry. There we go, that's it. It says GPO Hong Kong reference BA flight 904 via Calcutta. The envelope of the attached letter is required for an official inquiry. It will be appreciated if you would return it to the controller of posts, Hong Kong, Kowloon. And presumably the Chinese underneath says the same thing. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why would the post office want the envelope returning? Mm. The only thing I can think of for them to want the envelope itself is perhaps for the dates. Otherwise, perhaps something specific happened on BE flight 904. I don't know. I had a look at Richard's article for 1955 and he said there was a systematic checking of mails throughout 1955 to prevent the dumping of decouvert mail, but Richard doesn't think that's a likely reason. There's no mention of a specific delay to air mail at this time. But it does say there were increased air mail services in 1955. In May, daily air mail services were introduced to some destinations, including Europe. So a question is, was the efficiency of the new service being monitored? So in conclusion, has anyone come across a similar label? Because I've never come across one before. And can mm. anyone tell me what kind of official inquiry it might have been? Oh. Hmm. Never seen before. No, do again. Back to that one. There it is. Well, it's obviously a, it's a post office label. Yeah, yeah. I mean, stationery is something that people. they use regularly because it's got all its reference number for reordering. That's right. That's right. The, 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 the number, the right bottom, I mean, refers to the whatever, you know, doc, document. Mm. Uh, so so it, it, it must have been produced uh, in bulk. Yes, right. yes. Norton. Chris Lawson has arrived. Maybe he would know. You can ask. <laughs> you can ask Chris whether he knows about this one. Yeah, yeah. Is it something you've come across before? Because I've, I've never, never seen it. I've never seen it before. No, no. What's that? Usually, no. certainly. Yeah. Susan. Yes. Susan, this is Wayman News. The oh. the label clearly says the envelope of the attached letter. It it suggests to me that the that the envelope was open. And that was applied to, with a staple probably, to, to the letter, because it doesn't say this envelope, it says the envelope of the attached letter. So could you go back to the picture of the, uh, of the item? This one, there we go. Hmm. There doesn't look to be anywhere where it might've been attached. There's no staple. Mark or... No, no, no. I'm saying it was. A, it looks like it was attached to the letter. Yeah. So it says, if you go back to the label again, it says, it says the envelope, the one thing we just looked at, of the attached letter. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming so, that way it means that the en the letter was in the envelope, but they don't want the letter back. They just want the envelope. Is that how you how you? Okay. Read it? Uh, it, could you show the back of the uh, of the envelope? Oh, okay. So it's on the back of the envelope. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay. Never it's mind. Stuck on. <laughs> it's stuck on. Yeah. I do wonder if it's been forwarded by 
an unusual routing by British Airways and that there were more direct ways to Hong Kong rather than Calcutta, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they put in the BA flight to people. Perhaps they think it should have been sent differently. I think the reason why people won't have seen more examples of these is that because the envelope would have been returned to the post office to the GPO. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah exactly. So that's why there's so few of them about. So either it wasn't returned or well, this somebody one in returned. the control of the post office was a keen collector. <laughs> yeah. Is there something to do with the um obviously the is it's a is a FPO? Is that something to do with that? Possibility, I suppose, but it's, it's got an FPO hand stamp on it, yeah. So maybe it's yeah. military. He was going to presumably a daughter or a wife, but that may be of a security reason, yeah. But the, sp the specific reference is the British Airways flight, mm. yeah. Oh, well, I just thought it was an interesting little item that somebody might have come across before <laughs> so that brings me to the end <laughs> All right. um, yeah. great thanks well thanks for sharing mm. okay has anybody got any comments right well i certainly haven't seen this before maybe uh susan you could you could write something um uh in in the uh, in the journal sent sent uh send something to uh nick yes yes i couldn't now it's been scanned now, it, now it's been scanned yeah <laughs> he needs he needs the material to fill up the, the 24 yes pages. It, it, it's a useful yeah. filler isn't it for a, a half page or I, I don't know, yeah, useful very very i would say very very useful i mean that's the there's a way you, you can actually get um uh, get uh, members uh, yes. uh, to, to share information. Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and a nice cheap one. <laughs> huh? Oh, a, right. a nice cheap one. Frugal. <laughs> a frugal one. <laughs> what, from, from a dealer? Is that from a dealer? It was an auction, yeah. yeah there's an auction. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> dealers, <laughs> no, I think even dealers are. Uh, you know, they, they slap a big price on it if they haven't seen it before. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you you you, you don't think I, I don't think you can get cheap things anymore from dealers unless unless it's just something that they have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Especially Hong Kong, Hong Kong or China, <laughs> I don't. Anyhow, um, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it, I have. Uh, a, I have. Um... Is there further to the presentation or? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, what are you okay. Doing? Okay. Uh, I've contacted uh, Sam and uh, Susan, uh, and I didn't know who else to contact. Mm -hmm. uh, a colleague and I are in the middle of uh, preparing a major priced catalog of Hong Kong postal stationery. Uh huh. This is going to be, we hope it to be the definitive work, um, mm -hmm. uh, rely, you know, relying on everything. Uh, my collection, uh, 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 David Chung's collection from the Philippines uh, mm -hmm. oh. and, and other people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what we have prepared is a spreadsheet um, uh, putting down everything that we've recorded, bogus items, uh, stuff that doesn't exist, uh, mm -hmm. added stuff that does exist. Uh, for example, we've just made uh, discoveries of the uh, overprints of the registration envelopes, uh, but we still, you know, we're still in the gathering phase because uh, we want this to be uh, correct. Uh, our philosophy is we will not list anything that we have not verified as existing. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, anyway, so um, I'm the uh, president of the uh, United Postal Stationery Society, which is uh, the world's largest society for postal stationery. Um, and uh, we, we will be published through that society, which publishes tons of postal stationery books. 
Mm. Um, so what we're, I was hoping is that uh, any other person who is interested in this project uh, and uh, 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 would uh, uh, be willing to assist. Hmm. And basically, um, uh, this would consist of uh, that we send you the spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and uh, update uh, anything that you may have. Uh, we do indicate uh, uh, which items we have never seen. Uh, we indicate um, uh, earliest known dates, and we have dozens of earlier dates than are on the uh, Hong Kong website. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of, uh, of dates, for, for example, um, and uh, so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, what we don't, what I don't have is uh, I spent a couple of days uh, uh, when I was in London for the, the 2020, uh, the, the show last year, um, uh, recording the De La Rue archives. And I have a ton of it uh, that I returned home with. Um, unfortunately, I, the printings that they record, it's almost impossible for me to match, I'll talk about the registration envelopes, to match which ones were. And even fundamental questions like the, uh, the surcharges that were done on the, uh, not the surcharge, but the overprints on the back of the uh, Victoria George, the, uh, the Victoria Edward, uh, uh, when they changed the uh, compensation schedule on the back, uh, there's uh, uh, several types. And the question in, in, in our mind is still, uh, were one of those uh, done by De La Rue and the more crude one done in Hong Kong? Or were they both done in Hong Kong? Uh, I, can, I still can find no answer to that kind of fundamental question. Mm -hmm. I do collect worldwide stationery, mm -hmm. and and I know that De La Rue, uh, uh, on many occasions, supplied overprinted or surcharged stationery in lieu of a new plate until they could get the new one ready. So until they could change the uh, the plate for the back of the, or they may have had a stock ready to ship, and they changed the rates, and then they were told to surcharge it before sending it, and so. These are kind of questions that that are up in the air, and it would be great if the if we could have an answer to that before we we go to publication. It yeah. is going to be fully uh, in color, of course, uh, fully illustrated, uh, and and uh, we I have uh, uh, in my computer here I have uh, several hundred thousand prices realized with pictures from auctions, eBay, uh, you name it, mm -hmm. and uh, so. Um, we have a, a pretty good basis for knowing uh, the, the relative scarcity of things. Uh, that's kind of an important deal because if you try to rely on Higgins and Gage or, or any other earlier catalog um, and just a apply a factor to it, uh, it's a very bad way to, to establish things. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I'm, uh, if you are interested in helping me and uh, Sam, I met him in, uh, in, uh, in uh, London and he's agreed after he said, after he, he got his feet back on the ground, becoming president of the Federation and so forth. Uh, and, but Susan's already, uh, done this for us. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and updated, we have all of her information, um, uh, I might mention that this is a, a broad catalog. It covers all of British Asia. So uh, Salon, from Salon and Maldives East, it covers everything. So I have been in contact with, we have been in contact with all the major collectors that we know of. Uh, Simon Martin Redmond for Sarawak, uh, you know, the Brunei gal, uh, all, this, all these people that, are known to be the specialists. Uh, we're trying to make this the worst country so far as uh, putting it together as Salon because they printed locally after World War One or even before World War One, and and there's no records, yeah. and, and they just did stuff hand to mouth. You know, they're somewhat like India. So uh, we're not doing India this time because it's India by is by we're going to do it, but that's late, that's going to be the next project. 
uh, and we, we we've gotten the, the 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 major collectors on board with that. So once we finish this project, which is going to be the postal station area of British East Asia, uh, it includes Sarawak, North Borneo, you know, all that, all that stuff. Uh, Hong Kong. Another area of Hong Kong that we don't have uh, sufficient information is are the modern issues. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, in my own collection. I, I I have I you know a ton of them, uh, but we don't have really any information. So we're hoping that somebody uh, out there uh, has either uh, access to government uh, announcements of when they were issued. Uh, and and actually, what was issued? In other words, uh, uh, are there items that are that, that we that we uh, are missing? For example, um, these are these uh, car sets. You know, these sets of uh, postal cards and letter cards that they issued for Christmas and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, this is a pretty major project, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're going to we're going about it systematically. Uh, I've been collecting postal stationery now since um, since about 1958. Uh, very, uh, you know, and and uh, I, I have what's probably considered the largest collection in the world now. Uh, and and uh, I've just been a, you know, that I don't collect any stamps at all. I don't collect postal history. I collect. I don't have a single stamp in my collection, but I do have about 800,000 pieces of postal stationery. <laughs> so, uh, from around the world, I click worldwide. So, so anyway, um, if you are interested in 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 the project, uh, send me an email, mm. and and uh, we get acquainted, and then we can I can start the process. So, yeah. so uh, if you're ready, I can uh, uh, mention my email, and then uh, we can go we can go from there okay wait, wait if you don't mind um yes uh, do you think we can write a few lines in our newsletter just to absolutely that, absolutely uh, you, you uh, if you if you like it, yeah uh, i mean we hope to publish late this year so we don't mm. have a lot of time okay you know but okay. uh if you like uh uh let's see who, who's um I'm a member, of course, of the Hong Kong Study Circle. I have been for I'm a member of about 70 societies. Yeah. Because yeah. since I collect worldwide, uh, you know, I try to keep up to date with pretty much any yeah. kind any society that 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 talks about station areas to some degree. Yeah. And um uh, uh, anyway, um uh, so yeah, uh what I'll would you email, so. what would you recommend that I do in that? Just send send a, a message to the editor. Uh, yeah, sure. I think that's the best way. Yeah. Okay, but but I, I thought you know since you you people here are obviously interested in postal stationery, I thought I'd uh, uh, you know appeal directly to you, and and so I'll I'll do that. I'll send an email to the editor uh, yeah. mentioning that. I think. But so. uh, in the meantime, because we got to get this, we, we're trying to move ahead, um, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work to verify mm -hmm. to you know uh, update. Uh, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, if you could, uh, I can give you my email now. Sam has it, and obviously Susan yeah, has it. I have it, it too. Oh. Sorry? I have it too. Okay, but I, I'll give it for the rest of anyone okay. else that's in, that's interested. So yeah. my uh, uh, one second here, and uh, and I'll read it right back to you. I need to know. I have two email addresses: one for the UPSS, and the other one for. Uh, my private, and I can't remember which one I used. Uh, <laughs> that, so let me see what Susan uh, uh, did. And I'll be, I'm looking at my computer right now. I'll be right, right <laughs> back with you. Uh, let's see, uh, Hong Kong. Wayne, why don't you type uh, it in uh, the chat? Uh, uh, okay, so I, I, I did use my UPSS one. We're going to, it's going to be published under the UPSS, the United Postal Stationery Society. Uh, so my email address is, you will, okay, is UPSS dash ED, because I'm the editor, <laughs> uh, at PACBELL, P A C. B E L L dot net. 
N-E-T. Okay, right. So that's U-P-S-S-E-D at pacbell, P-A-C-B-E-L-L dot net. Right. Great. So if any if anyone else is uh, uh, willing to assist, mm. uh, w again, what would happen is uh, send me an email and I will uh, then send you uh, the spreadsheet with uh, information as to what how to how to look at it. It's 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 a straightforward uh, spreadsheet in Excel uh, and, uh, you know, and and and. It's just a straightforward spreadsheet in Excel. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> with with enough information that you should be able to do it. And, and, oh, it's also a concordance table with all the uh, other catalogs, uh, you know, that uh, Asher, Higgins and Gay, Shorberlin, all these people, uh, you know, that, that hmm. it has all the other catalog numbers for each item in there. So it's a concordance table also. Right. Good. Okay. So, uh... Thanks. Uh, I think anybody uh, who are listening, you know, if you if you wish to help or you have a significant collection of postal stationery, will you give uh, Wayne a hand? So what do we have to do with the spreadsheet? Just fill in the or check the dates or the yeah, details? okay. Basically, what we and Susan's already gone done done this, and I for that I want to publicly thank you, Susan. I haven't responded sufficiently yet because we, frankly, we've been mired in Ceylon. It's really been a, a horrible uh, slog to go through. Uh, our spreadsheet for Ceylon is 1,800 lines to give oh. you an idea, <laughs> and, and and so forth. Anyway, um, the, the basically uh, the, the first thing is to see if there's any anything in your collection that's missing. Uh, probably not in the postal cards. Uh, possibly in the George the Fifth envelopes, because there's quite a few varieties. There's different uh, uh, color overlays on the inside. There's several knives, uh, which we're going to, of course, illustrate. Uh, but the most critical one is the registration envelopes, especially the, the Elizabeth ones that were modified on the back with the uh, with the uh, to change the, uh, the compensation schedules. Yeah. And uh, we have some noted. Uh, we don't have, you know, I, we doubt if that's all there is. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so you go through your collection and, you know, systematically from beginning to end and see uh, if we got things wrong or right or omitted. Then the second thing is uh, earliest known dates. And uh, for that, we ask that uh, if you have an earlier date uh, that you, for all of these, you just amend the uh, the spreadsheet in, in red ink, or you know, turn the color to red so we can see what you've changed. Uh, and if you have an earlier date or a new item that you send us a scan, uh, and, and if it's a postal card, just the front's fine. But if it's in registration or something else important like that, both sides, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can uh, uh, verify it. And that's basically it. So what we can do then is have a, you know, a a definitive work on this subject. And, uh, uh, well, that's it. Thank you, Wayne. Good luck. Mm, I think it's a very meaningful project. Mm. It's okay. been uh, one of my lifelong objects. Uh, mm. uh, believe it or not, I used to work for Higgins the Gage. Ah. <laughs> well, the yeah, and, and so this was back when I, and back in, uh, I was gonna buy the company actually. Uh, in uh, in 1971, uh, and so I, I went to Pasadena and I worked for him for three months, just inventorying the stock. Wow! And then at the end of that summer, uh, I uh, I uh, we you know talked about we did we negotiated the sale, and uh, I thought he wanted too much for it, so it never did happen. Uh, I was too young at the time to understand that I was really getting a bargain. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, there was over a million pieces in, in inventory. Uh, mm. And anyway, so it was, you know, so um, I was a contributor uh, to much of my name appears in the front of the, the that that catalog quite a bit. Uh, so I, I contributed quite a bit, uh, uh, you know, from information that I had and so forth. Back in those days, there was no email or anything. Everything was a, a photocopy and a letter. You know, mm. uh, so I, I knew uh, Ed Fladon, who was the editor, uh, 
you know, personally uh, and his wife and so forth. So uh, I actually, I, I've written about, I've written about my experiences down there and how it was done and the whole way the catalog was made and everything else uh, in, in the journal of the UPSS, which is uh, available online uh, to members, uh, all issues are. Um, and if you are interested in seeing what the UPSS is about, like I said, this is going to be published by the UPSS. Uh, just go to uh, www.upss.org, O-R-G, and then the, it's a very robust website. It, it also contains James Benden's um, uh -huh. uh, listing of uh, specimen postal stationery of the world. Mm -hmm. That's where it's been deposited. It's not in his books. His book covers stamps plus a few items of stationery as, as examples, but the definitive place is the UPSS website. And of course, for the Hong Kong versions of those, we'll be using the same terminology to, for consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, uh, have you contacted uh, Christoph Gatner? Um, um, about seven, six, seven years ago, I formed a corporation in California called uh, Gardner Manus Publications. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he and I, he and I formed a company to write a worldwide catalog. All right, all right. Okay. Um, it became an impossible task based on his time schedule, and I mm -hmm. dissolved the corporation yeah. uh, less than a year later. Um, he is currently quite ill and has not been in the office for probably since London. I, really? I went to dinner with him at London. He's, he's oh. a personal friend. He's been to my home many times. I've been to his place many times. I'm a very, you know, a uh, good friend of his. And unfortunately, he's he's got uh, he's got problems. And so he, he he's really confined to his house. He's not allowed really to go into the office. And the company's being run by uh, uh, it, his wife is basically running it, and she hired a new manager, Stephanie. Uh, I can't pronounce her last name, uh, and she's running the company now. And oh, uh, uh, so, if, if he recovers, he'll he'll go, I'm sure he'll go back. And I know his love of stationery, and that's why we formed the corporation. Oh. You, you know, okay. and uh, it was going to be a great project. Um, uh, I spent uh, three days uh, at his office with all the people that were involved in the project. It was like nine of us, uh, three full days uh, talking about how we're going to do it and how to lay it out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and like I said, it just couldn't happen, uh, you know. So, yeah. so after all this time, now I've decided to go ahead with my new colleague, uh, who's who has an incredible collection of. Uh, British area stamps, postal stationery, and postal history. I mean, it's it's uh, to give you an idea of the, of the scope of his collection. He put on a one frame display of uh, Great Britain post offices abroad, one uh, stamps and covers, but only the ten shilling. <laughs> okay, <laughs> only the ten shilling. So this, this man, uh, uh, who's the CEO of a tech company here where I live, I live in uh, Silicon Valley here in California. Um, he has an incredible collection of everything. Uh, not Well, not the whole world, but primarily British. But uh, uh, he started collecting stationery seriously after he met me about 10 years ago. And he's been voracious. He's been, you know, literally buying everything in sight in order to, to build up his collection. Um, and then he's the, and he's very knowledgeable. So uh, he and he's my my collaborator, and we we're, we're working 50-50 totally together. And he helps me. I help him. And and the more people you have in a project, the better the project ends up. So, right. So that's yeah. the story right here. I, you know. Uh, <laughs> Great. Um, and like I said, uh, the UPSS magazine, uh, I've written, for example, I wrote a, a, a major series of articles. Uh, I write a lot of, the magazine comes out every two months and it runs about 70 pages or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, um, and 
if any of you are interested in, in receiving a sample copy uh, uh, in your email to me, uh, let me know and I'll put your name on the list. Uh, you have to send me your mailing address and I can do that. The society is, is one of only two that we not only have, down, uh, we have all 400 and something issues on our website uh, for members to look at, but it's fully searchable. That mm -hmm. means if you type in the word Hong Kong or just mm -hmm. Kong or whatever words or phrase you want, it'll bring up every article or advertisement or anything where that word is mentioned right online there. And then you can download it or look at it or whatever you want to do. So uh, this software cost us twenty five thousand um, dollars, and and you know we did that, uh, and uh, we are uh, the society is financially well off. We donated fifty thousand dollars to Boston twenty twenty six. So so again, uh, we're in the business of promoting postal stationery and 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 public pu publishing books about postal stationery. On our website is a list of all of our current books. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, many of our books are also ebooks. Our, pro our policy is that after six months or a year, it depends, uh, that all of our printed publications become available as a downloaded, downloadable PDF uh, uh, file, you know, that you, so, th so that we have ebook and printed book for everything. Well, some we've run out of the printed. We decided not to not to reprint because of the probably won't be worth it. So we just keep up the the ebook. Um, uh, anyway, it's a pretty dynamic society. Uh, it's been growing rather than shrinking like a lot of societies, which is good news. Uh, you know, and um, I, I was mentioning that I, I wrote a series of articles in there uh, uh, in the magazine about the overprints. Uh, on the back of the Victoria George, uh, the Victoria Edward registration envelopes. And I illustrated in there all examples uh, that I currently have in my uh, <laughs> pictorial database. Uh, I'm, there's a lot more out there, I know that, but, but you know, uh, they're pretty rare items, but I also showed the different types. But I couldn't tell you is which ones, if they were done by dealer room and locally, that, that part's still a mystery. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, so um, any, anything, anybody got anything to show? Yes, Sandra, I've still got things. Yes. Duncan. Yeah, go ahead. I wish I could say that this was just a small selection of my personal stationary cars, but in fact, it's all of them. Uh, not many seem to have been flown, but then not many postcards were flown in total. But I start with the Christmas concessionary rate that Air Orient offered in 1932. The normal postcard rate at this time was 55 cents. You also had to pay an extra one cent over the face value of the card when you purchased it. It was sold to you for a one cent. On the Christmas concession, Air Orient offered to fly the postcards at 49 cents rather than 55 cents. With your one cent purchase fee, it costs you 50 cents to uh, send the card. You could only send GPO cards you couldn't send ordinary postcards at this rate if you tried to send an ordinary postcard it would have been at the 55 cent rate i did some years ago get a copy of the uh, mail notice advertising this service and there's uh, one card there that was cancelled in kowloon a one cent card made up to 49 cents and then there's a couple of other cards one i've borrowed off susan uh, the one top left, the other addressed to Captain Witherspoon. He was a very prominent era philatelist in the 1930s. Uh, the total dispatch of postcards on, on this service was 
837, a figure I've got Richard to thank for, and 760 of those were addressed to Britain or were flown through to London. Interestingly, the concession only applied to the postcards. If you sent an ordinary letter by service, like the one bottom right, then you paid the normal rate, in this case, $1.35 for the air fee and 12 cents for the surface fee to Great Britain. This is the only card I think I've got that is actually at the 55 cent rate. It came into force in August 1932 and was effective until the 1st of June 1934. This card left Hong Kong on the 10th of April on board the uh, Messagerie Maritime vessel Porthos. There's a watercolour there of Porthos at Saigon. And it connected with the 15th of April flight through to Marseille. This is at the uh, reduced 50 cent rate, which came into effect on the 1st of June 1934. In this case, another one cent card, but it's Going to Germany in this case, left Hong Kong on the Athos 2, connected with the 9th of December flight, and this was scheduled to reach Marseille on the 18th, and there's a Marseille transit of that date. The black cross through the Par Avion was flying in Marseille to indicate that airmail transmission had ceased. And it was sent on to Germany by rail. This is a short lived rate and only applied to mail that was flown by Imperial Airways. Uh, in 1935, Imperial Airways tried to attract more of the mail away from KLM and our Orient by reducing its rates so that the uh, letter fee came down to 50 cents and the postcard rate down to 32 cents. Uh, this is the only one I've ever actually seen her. Mick Goldsmith sold it to me many years ago when he didn't seem to rate air mails at all, which I was very pleased. But uh, it was sent to Singapore by the P&O vessel, the Mantua, connected with Imperial Airways IW353. The IW letters stand for India Westbound. Uh, it reached Croydon on the 15th of July on board the aircraft that's pictured at the bottom there, Syrinx. These three cards all went by the first Hong Kong Penang feeder service, and there was clearly some confusion. The two cards at the top are sent by the, or to the same address here, and it's the same handwriting, but one card, she seemed, he or she seemed to think that the four cent surface fee had to be paid as well. So the card on the left has 26 cents, which was the correct rate, plus a four cent stamp added to pay a surface fee, but in fact the 26 cents was an inclusive fee. The other two cards are both correctly franked and somebody clearly uh, enlightened them because <laughs> that one is correctly franked. I suspect one of the reasons why these cards are so hard to find uh, from the figures here, uh, there were 6,504 letters dispatched by the first feeder service only 194 cards in total. So they are then on the ground. And lastly, a rather clean, attractive card sent at the 26 cent rate with Dorado indicating the top corner. And there's a press photograph of Dorado taken in 1937 showing the very prominent Union Jacks they were hoping to persuade Japanese fighter pilots that it was a civilian aircraft and not a Chinese uh, fighter aircraft. It always seemed to work because, of course, uh, later on, Dardanus was forced down by the uh, Japanese. But that is it. All I've managed to find in 30 years of collecting. Are you muted, Andrew? Right. Congratulations. Great stuff. <laughs> right. Um, wow. Um, anybody got any questions? Okay. 
Um, all right, so um, I think uh, uh, the Charles, Charles Chan has a few things to say. Charles, do you want to uh, show something? His microphone is muted. Oh, yeah. Yes. Can you hear me now? I can certainly. Yes, yes we can. Okay. Hear you. okay. Mm. Can you see that? Yeah. I think most of uh, the items uh Sam uh, has viewed it before in the London 2022 already. Therefore, I'm um, showing that uh, it, it is uh, postal stationary things uh, extract from my 3D Porter collections and exhibit. Uh, I will start uh, with this one newly acquired. It is a China of Perpin 1.5 cents, one and a half cents. Upgrade two cents and one cents to US. The next is the Chi Fu uh, H size puzzle envelope. Quite a big one with the register. I like this. About what then? What size is this? Size H. H, H yeah. yeah. Not king size, okay. Size H. That is with a uh, 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 registered uh, 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 hand stamp of a chief of BPO. That is uh, issued the mail. This is the band, the cover band, with a circle handstand of a Dutch East India Post Office for checking the value declare mail. That means it is in, uh, issued the mail. It's quite interesting. The next one will be uh, photo F1 postal card, three cents to Germany. Sorry. Okay. Another is uh, also a postal card, three cents, struck with the D29 killer. Cura to Paris. How many are there? The D29 on postcard. <clears throat> I don't think there will be a number, but uh, I don't have the record for that. There are three or maybe less than five. That will be one of the two recorded. Ah, pretty scarce. Yeah, according to according to Frank Dell, uh census in uh, 2006, the uh, Hong Kong DS Journal, number 10. Uh, Frank at that moment time recorded 14 covers with 30 E29. Uh, four. Three cents over being sixteen cents yellow provisional postal card and two definite uh, definitive postal card. Another is the uh, Dolinda. This one's to Paris. For the green card, there's the two. For the provisional card, four. Am I answer to your question? Yeah. 
That means if it is supposed if it is supposed a postcard totally will be uh so Eddie, Eddie no, was we will say it's okay. Mm. If in count is uh, two, it is one of the two norms. Okay. Any question? No. Okay, I'll go on. Okay, this one is uh hang out uh on the two cents uh Newspaper wrapper, postal wrapper. I think uh, I cannot recall which year uh, of a Hong Kong study circle journal that uh, Chris Morton also show a similar example, claiming to be the only one known. And this one, I I telling uh, Chris, uh, it is uh, one more on my hand. But anyhow, I think that is quite scary anyhow. Any question? Yeah. Then I go on. Let us say hand towel postcard. Four cents. Use to London. This one I have uh, sold before. I, have, I think I, I have sold it before. That is uh, the T mark was applied uh, incorrectly by Shanghai because uh, well from hand count mailing to Shanghai will be of uh, local rate one cent only. And I think this T mark will be the latest uh, known day for for Shanghai. The small one. Why should why why should it be a T? Is it one cent correct rate? Yes. Uh, one cent is correct local rate. That mailing from uh, uh, Hong to Shanghai. Yeah. So why should from, there be a postage yeah. still mark? I bet I've heard it. Hello, hello. Huh? <laughs> I cannot hear you, uh, 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 Andrew. Miss misread it as uh, a card sending to overseas. Might be. Well, the mail, the uh, mail, uh, yeah. the mail from Hang Kao. I went to Shanghai anyway, so um, it was correct. It was the correct usage of one cent card. Charles, so do you what, what do you guess the writing, the writing in the uh, purple pencil because that's post office instruction, right? Mm -hmm. So I what do you think it is? Of, Sam, it is a. I think it is a kind of uh, delivery instruction. Looks to be hard song. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is a written in pencil, okay? Looks like, uh, I don't know what that is, but. Right, okay. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a mistake that they put the T there. Yeah. Right. Why didn't, why wasn't it crossed off? No idea. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, uh, I think I don't think they look they can collect the uh, unpaid the the the, the, the un, unpaid postage, so called unpaid postage, underpay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh huh. Right then. Because at the left side, the 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 the, the handwritten things originally I consider this a T, but T. One plus something oh, looks not. Therefore, I'm considering this uh, a delivery instruction, maybe yeah. hard stuff. Something yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Any suggestions, Sam? Yeah. yeah, okay. The next one. Okay, I'll go, I'll go up, I'll go, I'll go forward. This one is a link poll, uh, also on a two cents, uh, uh, new sweeper, the cut down one, and, uh, add it with, uh, four cents and two cents subway to Germany. Is that the right rate? Because for the newspaper, or they, I don't think it is a packing a newspaper, maybe a shirt code. If wait, for the newspaper, wait, wait. yeah, the weight of a newspaper will be two cents, yeah, uh, four ounces. Two cents for four ounces. Yeah, but for the circular, it will be two, uh, two cents for, for two, for two ounces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Therefore, this packet may be a half it could be, it could be a big, you know, heavy newspaper. Yeah, maybe a heavy, not overweight, paper. overweight, more than four ounces. But more than four ounces, well. Possible, if you look at the. I, mean, uh, I don't the, think it's possible for, 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 for a newspaper in that weight. Circular, maybe. No, newspaper do. Last month I showed. Uh, uh, from 1872, they actually said uh, that the, new, the newspaper used to be each newspaper, but from 1872, it changed to uh, 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 under four ounce per item. So you have a newspaper of maybe 16 pages, then you, you could actually have a double rate newspaper. This in the in the government gazette, it actually says a newspaper. Yeah under four ounces instead yeah. of newspaper each pre before before is each yeah that's right but from yeah. 72 yeah it, became, will, it, will, it will it will put a weight on they put a the weight vary on it is a scale a scale yeah a scale the, the newspaper are getting thicker and thicker so you have a, have a if you look at the later issues of uh for example uh, daily mail I mean, you know, it's, it's something like um, eight or nine pages, eight or 12 pages. So so if it's just still one newspaper, you to pay two cents, then, you know, uh, yeah. So that, that's why they put on, uh, well, I, I don't, well, I don't, don't expect the, gov uh, the, the government gets that wrong. But, well, they can be wrong, but. Uh, and just look at this one. Yeah. It is making eight, eight cents, right? Yeah, they're very heavy. Uh, if, a four, if four ounces per two, uh, two cents for four, uh, 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 yeah, two cents for uh, four ounces. By the way, by, by the way, this stamp guy, I think this stamp, uh, I think he's a stamp collector, so he, he could be could have been over Frank. Can be, yeah, I think, I think. Yes, I, I, I do not recognize the name uh, uh, as a stamp collector. No? Okay. I, I don't, I, I know quite a few names, for, obviously, but uh, that one uh, I, I have not seen before. All so right. I don't, I, I doubt if he was. Uh, I, I, yeah, well, I've, I've seen more than one, uh, maybe, maybe it's just correspondence. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. And well, his, fa his family may have clipped, you know, or somebody... Yeah, it, it, and he would have received newspapers on a regular basis. So he probably, whoever discovered the uh, the correspondence, may have had a number of of the wrappers there, you know, from the newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also could be that uh, it was not a newspaper. It could be uh, uh, samples, a uh, 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 printed brochure, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature, which also uh, could be used yeah. by the wrappers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think this packet may be one part.
beautiful four cover cents, though. Yeah, it, because it is uh, two cents for four four arms. That means one cent is uh, for two two uh, for two arms, and it is now paying eight cents. It is a uh, one pound sixteen pounds. <laughs> Yeah. So a heavy things. Right. Okay. Interesting. Let me ponder on that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Well, this one is uh, Shanghai to Macau. One sense. So that the every every uh, inner port. Uh, Postcard way is one cent. Therefore, just before the hand count to Shanghai with a key mark will be incorrectly applied. This is another one from Shanghai to Japan. Also paying one cent local rate for the postcard. Therefore, it can be proved that uh, that one from Hankow to Shanghai, mm. the T mark, was, was incorrectly applied for them. And should have been crossed off? Should be, but well, it, <laughs> it, it, it left it that way. Okay. I think the, the, I think the Shanghai sorting, sorting clerk misread the address. Sure, yeah. he's got Shanghai on, on, the, on the right. But, but later, if it's found by another senior officer or uh, uh, the, post, the, the postmaster, it will be crossed out because you need to collect back the money, right? Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> well, I know, I know what I know what that the the, the, the writing um the, the manuscript. That's yeah. the address. He says got seven, which is the seven Seaward Road. It becomes. Seven sha, something like that, you know, the word. The yeah, delivery, the delivery yeah. mark. Yeah, because it is seven, uh, number seven C. Yeah, word. if you look at the English, it's the seven C with row. Right. So it's become seven, whatever that is, looks like a sha or something. Yeah, which is, a, oh, yeah. just a just a, a, a translation of the of the road. Right, let's let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, another postal envelope, four cents, Shanghai to Canton. With the best step, 04. Uh, Swalto. Swalto Street. Please notice the years, the two digit year was inverted. The top one, one. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, another one. This Cash, one is Cash. inverted. Yeah. <laughs> A scale one, uh, Shanghai, uh, Swell Town. The day, uh, the month and day about the the the, the partner. Okay, this is a small tower envelope, uh, king size. The left, uh, the left, uh, uh, uh top corner is with uh, germs uh, type number three, right, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. you. <laughs> 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 no, oh. Gosh, what, 20 years ago? Gosh. <laughs> yes, it is very rare terms uh, type number three or plow R7, box registration marking. Okay. That is your, that is your original research. It is of a king size. 
K size K. A where what? Can you talk about that? Okay, this is another postal envelope uh, on, with a port network, the long port network registration market. Using uh, 1919. It is the back with the warranty marking. Okay, that's all for me. Lovely, lovely, very nice. Good. Any question? Uh, a comment? Yeah, any comment? Very nice. <laughs> uh, Charles, yes. Charles. Lovely. Your, uh, lovely. News rapper, <laughs> your news wrapper from Hang Kao. I also have one. Is it also, yeah. also to stamp? This one? Is it all? No. no yeah. No, no. Yeah. I also have one. Okay. That means that uh, you can tell uh, Chris. Martin. Mine was O2 usage. Good. Mine's O2 usage. I cannot recall. Uh, I cannot recall Chris Martin's uh, which year. Um, it was uh, before title as uh, what we call the Chairman Jam, something like that. Yeah, in the. Uh, in the in the in the Hong Kong Statistical Commission, which year? Okay, sorry. <laughs> so the the Edward um, the Edward rappers hasn't arrived in Hankow then, right? September oh three. They're just using what they have. I think oh three. I think quite they know. Uh, just uh, issuing the, the the King Edward issues. I think most of uh, the merchant or, uh, or or the persons will be in possession of a QV stamps, like a uh, stamp similar to present situation. Many one get uh, get the the, the, the stamp of a uh, uh, QE two in UK, although the 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 the, 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 the Charles of the third uh, stamp will be issued soon, right? And uh, to my information, as I recall, written from Plow saying that the QE stamp was invalid, invalid in May 1909, to my memory. Is. That means uh, QE stamp. It was valid up to end of uh, April 09. Quite a long period. Hmm. And certain CDS on uh, uh, mostly found on uh, uh, King Edward or King George. Uh, if a lay use on QV will be quite scare or rare. Like, uh, say, uh, Canton, large Canton type E, no matter index A or index B, if on QV, will be really, really scare. Okay, this is the first time, therefore, I'm not talking about this uh, anymore. That, uh, because it is the uh, postal station doing things, therefore I can stop here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Lovely. Any questions? All right. Okay. So um, right. So let me. Um, are there any 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 other people who would like to show anything? All right. Okay. Just just let me just turn to, uh, just a bit light-hearted because we have had some seen some awfully nice stuff. Um, and um let, let's 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 do let's do uh now nah, let's let's do something uh well for fun uh, basically this is fun i mean not 
this is this is frugal philately, which is uh, something cheap and cheerful. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's let's go. All right, so I'm gonna that's all right. That's gonna be brief. No, that's gonna be long. I'm gonna talk about three three little things. So the first one is the 2000. 203 hello from hong kong airmail postage fee postcard okay and the other the second topic i'm going to talk about is the hong kong 1997 hong kong the, the uh, so-called the uh, the hong so-called hong kong uh, a two dollar thirty aerogram and the third one is is more of a question than actually i know the answer so let's go so, hello from hong kong now uh, it actually is the 20th, uh, this year is the 20th anniversary of this uh, very quaint uh, stationary card. A uh, stationary card is a, is a card with a uh, lithium, and uh, which is, it, it, it could be either bear of value or it's a, a no value. But this is the latter. Uh, in 2003, this, uh, after the SARS ep epidemic in Hong Kong, uh, which caused a massive disruption in the economy and misery. In, Gen in Hong Kong. So following the, the recovery, the Hong Kong SAR government offered free postage and phone calls overseas to help to promote a SARS safe Hong Kong and try to attract uh, tourists uh, back to the, to the country. Uh, the, obviously, the, the, the economy was devastated uh, then, as this is not all now. <laughs> But and uh, and then the, the government actually printed uh, third three hundred thousand postcards, um, uh, and it, it released it on the fourteenth of June, uh, which has the slogan "Hello from Hong Kong." And they were given out free at the forty uh, designated post offices and district offices as well uh, for posting to, to relative friends and business contacts overseas. Now, remember overseas, okay, to encourage them to visit Hong Kong. Now, the card is very special. It, it's actually it's, it's airmail postage paid and it's really intended for sending abroad. And uh, with the cards, there are some stickers bearing the slogan, also free. And then the post office actually sponsored the event by issuing an inject slogan. Uh, we actually we didn't discuss that. Uh, in our um, uh, postal slogan uh, uh, meetings. Okay, so this is actually is the is, is the launching uh, ceremony with the, with the director of information services uh, Yvonne Choi, who who now retired, uh, announcing the issue of the cards, and then you know this is uh, uh, Mike Rouse, uh, Michael Michael Rouse. Okay, and then it just uh, launching the postcard on the thirteenth of June. So, um, and, uh, and, uh, and the background is, is really the WHO declare Hong Kong a SARS free and safe city to visit. And there was a, a second batch of uh, postage free postcards was issued with the same design. And, uh, and later in June, presumably all the 300,000 cards were given out. So they decided to uh, print uh, a, a, a second issue. So the first issue, actually, you can see uh, on the front, and it's a, it's a picture postcard with, with, the, with the slogan, hello from Hong Kong, and with a skyline, and you can see the skyline of the Hong Kong island, uh, the Hong Kong CEC there, and, um, uh, and then uh, some sort of happy faces uh, of, of all races, uh, uh, old, elderly, and as well as young. And then on the back, you've got the, the indicium, uh, which is, a picture of the uh, airport, actually uh, uh, showing uh, uh, some Cafe Pacific jets, which is uh, a symbol of the Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong airline, and uh, with a printed airmail label. So this is actually intended for airmail usage. Okay, so this is this is the the, the message printed at the, at, at the left bottom here. Uh, Okay, so this is this is the first issue printed on hard cards, um, uh, and with the with the, with the, the size of sixteen point five by twelve. So you can you can actually see here. It actually said Hong Kong postage pay airmail valid until uh, December the thirty first, 
2003. So it actually has a, uh, uh, you know, a period of use. It says not valid for postage on other mail items, i.e. you're not supposed to send it uh, locally. Uh, okay, so since there's no airmail in, in Hong Kong, so it can't. So it's a pre-printed airmail label here on the, on the uh, top left. And there, there is the uh, uh, picture from inside of the Czech Lab Corp Airport, uh, looking at some uh, Cafe Pacific jets, and there's a validity date, 31st of December, uh, print on. This is the sheet of uh, uh, self-adhesive labels. Uh, okay, uh, so these were given out free from the from the from the uh, 40 post offices, the first district offices, and then you are supposed to use this to stick on to uh, to letters or whatever parcels, uh, um, uh, you know, from Hong Kong to overseas places. So these are the obviously uh, obviously all of them philatelic. Uh, uh, the, the first day of issue uh, 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 postmarks. Uh, this is from the GPO counter. This is actually the AMC, which AML Center. Uh, it is it's an, it's called the Inkjet uh, slogan. It's actually printed by Inkjet printer, uh, and with, with bearing the wording Hong Kong, looking ahead in the, in the bilingual. Um, and then also this funny one, Gift Redemption Center GPO, uh, which, which is. Uh, you know, just one of these these quaint things. Uh, anyway, uh, it, uh, in 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 the inside the GPO can buy uh, souvenirs and gift, and they have if they have a a, a chalk on their like, postmark or whatever to to date your receipt. So you've also got the philatelic cancels, of course, uh, and then as well as uh, a, a this is this is actually a a poster. Uh, you know, uh, uh, postmark uh, the K39 is actually from Kowloon machine. So it's actually this, this was dropped in a box. Okay. Uh, so I believe it was used locally. So the second issue, uh, exactly the same. Uh, uh, the order print accepts the, the, the message at the, at the bottom left. Uh, there's plenty to smile by in Hong Kong. Why not come and visit us? See you soon. Okay. And the quantity is not known. I'm not sure. It's, it had never been published. If the first one was 300,000, nobody knows how many. Uh, maybe it is there, but uh, you know, I, you know this, it's not published. So this, it's exactly the same. So this is actually the first day of issue with uh, uh, June the 28th. With a different postmark to the GPO postmark. Uh, this is a handbag postmark from the counter. And then, of course, the, at the Philatelic Bureau. And then this is the Garden Road uh, uh, post office, uh, now, now closed, of course. Uh, so that's the date. And uh, actually, hard to find because a lot of these are supposed to be, to, 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 to be uh, sent abroad. And then, and then, um, so actually, the ones that are used abroad, are the, uh, well, I mean, are, are actually, maybe not that easy to come by because one, they don't look attractive. Two, I mean, they've got no stamp on them. People just chuck them away, basically, thinking that they are they are just, you know, just, uh, you know, print a circle or something. So this is actually, obviously, this is actually a, a metallic one sent by our member, actually, Wilson Young. And you can see this chop there. But I think, I think he probably sent this card to, to many, many of his friends or abroad. So this one is to Netherlands uh, with a different inkjet, inkjet slogan. Uh, this is this page, a house number, inkjet slogan, and uh, used on the Christmas Eve, you know, uh, almost at the end of the, the, the so-called the, uh, the valid, valid validity. So <clears throat> post-date use, so they could be actually uh, uh, having said, uh, you know, the the uh, the validity, be, the valid date being the thirty first of December, but then there's some of them were used afterwards, um, uh, uh, occasionally, um, uh, and then and these this is this is um, uh, so called one person one letter free post day. Um, it's, it's a Hong Kong Post uh, promotion campaign for letter writing, and the and the letters or whatever posted postcards posted locally on this day. Do not require postage. So you've got a special letter box placed in 10 designated post office uh, in Hong Kong and Kowloon Territories. And then 
uh, these were canceled by the machine. So the K, K47 is a Kowloon machine, and H26 is a, is a Hong Kong machine. And this one's actually sent to London. Um, uh, and this one, where correct usage, which is obviously the card intended for airmail, this this one with the with the airmail cover up was sent locally to Sai Ying Kun and you know who, and uh, and then it's got an arrival cancel the next day on the back. So improper usage. Uh, some countries a uh, cut out postal stationery can be used as the stamp, but uh, not in this case, I'm afraid. Uh, somebody actually cut out the, the, the card and stuck it, stuck it on an envelope and, uh, and tried to send it uh, locally. And of course, this is, is a double illegal thing. So uh, it, was, uh, 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 the, it was a postage due. Uh, the local rate was at that time $1.40 and it was doubled in $2.80. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let's jump to the next, uh, uh, the, the $2.30 error graph. 1997 again, this is uh, frugal philately, only cost you $2.30 uh, to, to buy. And uh, it was actually, uh, it was uh, issued together with the so called neutral definitive of Hong Kong. And only bear, uh, there was the interim period between the, 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 the British Hong Kong, the crown, and then the, uh, the, 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 the Hong Kong China definitive was issued uh, later in, in 1997. Uh, so, so this is actually a, a, a short period between between the, um, the changeover. There is a, a something called a neutral de definitive, uh, only bearing Hong Kong, the word Hong Kong. So this is actually one of the, the stationery, uh, and this is a, is a is actually the first day of issue, uh, January uh, the twenty sixth, uh, nineteen ninety seven. This is the original printing. Uh, uh, the first printing, well, original printing, the first printing of the aerogram issued on that date, and there are lots of them around. People just, uh, this is obviously a, a, a CTO. And uh, uh, somehow, somebody actually noticed, you know, some uh, that they actually have a, a, an error printed on the back, which is they transposed. The Chinese character, with, uh, the second and third Chinese character, uh, the, the, uh, the, the two Chinese characters on the back, so it becomes uh, 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 wrong. I mean, you know, from a Chinese point of view. I mean, uh, so uh, it's rather, rather, rather as astute collector noted it, and then duly reported to the post office, and uh, the post office was a little bit red faced it, and uh, and. And uh, but obviously uh, some other collectors reported the same thing, and then you know, how can it possibly you know you you made a you made a grammatical error in this uh, in this case? So actually it was decided that all the printed uh, uh, error graph uh, uh, would have to be withdrawn. So after that <clears throat> they issued the interim the so-called emergency error graph, which 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 is actually uh, which is which is actually a uh, what it looks like um, a, just just a, a commercial commercial aerogram actually printed by the junk uh, junk trademark. It's a junk trademark form uh, approved by PMG on a, uh, it was approved by BMG uh, and um, actually uh, it, it, uh, it has the, the aerogram has a as a as a, a pre franked one dollar and one dollar thirty cents, making it up to two dollar thirty. Um, they those st the stamps were were put there by by uh, by the post office staff, and they were sold over the counter. So that that actually that was happened that happened on the first of April. It's a, <laughs> interesting the April Fool's Day, and um, this uh, this aerogram actually uh, is now listed as the Hong Kong Post Office catalog. As, as a, a definite entity and not, not just this one of things that you, know, you could you could buy a commercial um, aerogram to, to send letters. So how long was it has it been uh, around? I think not very long because uh, I haven't actually got the exact date uh, but uh, the, 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 the second printing of the aerogram arrived uh, from Australia later with, with, the, with the right uh, uh, configuration of the Chinese uh, wording. 
and and then that that's that's uh, obviously the, the the previous letter the the emergency issue was sold out eventually and um, and the post office actually listed that in their catalog so I'm, I'm surprised anyway anyway so there you go now the third topic I'm going to talk about we go back uh, many 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 years uh, ago uh, with this um, so-called one cent uh, uh, postal stationery cards to an Australian state enigma. Uh, so, so this is the one, uh, a one cent postal stationary card to Hobart. Uh, Hobart town is in, obviously we you know is in Tasmania. Now, um, interestingly, uh, as uh, Charles Chen said, that the, the one cent rate is usually, it was a local rate and uh, and obviously to uh, to Australia, I mean this is definitely underpaid. Um, so the incidentally, actually the the China Philatelic Association Journal forty five of of August uh, twenty twenty one, the you know the cover front also showed uh, showed a, a a four cent postal uh, postal card to Brisbane, uh, written by the same hand. Also cancelled B62, and it was it was sent uh, uh, about uh, one year earlier. That this is uh, we're all sorted. Thank you very much. Hmm? Yes. Well, the, the four cents was the correct rate, obviously. Uh, so the question is: is it is it is it privately printed? Uh, why was it sent? Now the thing is, it is on the back. It has a printed. Um, I think you call it a sonnet or, or it's like a poetry, but the sonnet actually has got 14 lines. So this is a, a kind of, uh, you, you, can, you can read it, it, it's quite interesting. Delaying as, as the tender ash delays to cloth itself when all the woods are green. So it actually refers to why Australia and, and uh, still not a member of the UPU. So you, you can say, uh, what stays her from the nation race, Australia from her proper sphere? What hinders every growing year, the Southern islands to take their place? So come Fiji, come Tasmanian Isle, nor fair New Zealand lag behind, when progress blows in every wind, who whispers lingo? So, Tasmania, in, 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 well, there was, there, there was not an Australia uh, as a country at that time, and there are all different Australian states uh, uh, joined UPU on the 1st of October 1891. And then, of course, it becomes Australia on, on, on January 1907. So New Zealand then uh, followed suit and became a member in nine, so on the same date. And Fiji, of course, joined later. So the question is, who actually sent this? And did it actually actually got there? I mean, you know, from the state, it, you know, it looks like it, it, it actually went from Hong Kong to Hobart, uh, but uh, by, by what ship? And why was it not posted to you? Uh, that, that's interesting. Um, I don't know whether actually you guys actually uh, come across something like that, perhaps sending it to other, say maybe to Sydney or to Melbourne or to Perth. They should exist. It's all from the same very nice, uh, 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 you know, writing, you know, handwriting, you know, like a copybook style handwriting. So it is a bit of a mystery. I think it's, it's, it's a joker, you know, or, or is it actually from, you know, whatever. And, and also, Andrew, Charles is speaking. Yeah. And I've received address is to the officer of the GPO. Is there any um, for what, that? what what was the uh, printed matter rate, uh, newspaper rate, or printed matter rate uh, to England at that time? Four cents. One cent, right? No, 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 no. Four cent. Four. No, no, no. I'm talking about like a, a printed matter. Oh, two. A, a newspaper, two. for example. Two. Two cents. One cent, right? No, two. No, one, one penny. One penny. Two cents. Oh, one penny. Two one cents. penny, right? Well, that that letter, since it, I mean that postcard, since it had no uh, uh, writing on the back, uh, mm -hmm. would be would have been considered uh, yeah. printed matter. 
yeah. And 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 printed matter rate and and postcard rate was the same. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, well, other post countries post oftentimes will will, yeah. will print printed matter over the top mm -hmm. uh, of the word postcard. Yeah. Just to make sure, but it wasn't required. So. Oh. My yeah. my idea is is that this card was sent at the printed matter rate uh -huh. because it contained no writing on the back. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Excuse me. The newspaper yeah. rate is a one penny equal to two cents Hong Kong. No one cent stamp at a time. Okay. Well. Yeah. So so maybe that was allowed because there was no one cent stamp at a time. Either you put a two cent stamp, which may be overpaid by one cent, uh, or just oh, forget it, you know, because it was it was actually sent to uh, to the post office. So uh, you know, say oh well, maybe turn a blind eye. But anyway, it's it's it's, it's interesting, and uh, the more interestingly, actually, who wrote it? I mean, uh, uh, you know, maybe Andrew, does the fact that it was ad addressed to a GPO indicate mm -hmm. the sender may be Hong Kong GPO? Yeah, and if yeah. so, then they could do whatever they want, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, there's also no uh, indication. No, no, they could not. Uh, by the UPU rules, uh, official mail sent internationally had it still had to be franked. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah, and the other option is that it's inside an envelope, right? Uh, well, it's got postmark. GPO, then. yeah, because so it's, it's yeah, GPO and it's then... GPO sending to GPO. So yeah. it's like a greeting card, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was just just ignored, you know, just a wave, mm. wave. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you have an exhibit to do or not to do, right? So. <laughs> 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 oh, many, 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 many years ago. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's that's a bit of an entertainment and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, and then a bit of an enigma what you think about and. Uh, you know, do do try it actually to find those hello from Hong Kong cards. They're not that easy. You go, you go, and you thought that they would be, uh, because they're they are really uh, they should be there are three hundred thousands of them. There should be lots of them around. But you try going around eBay uh, or other uh, other other places, you you won't find any because you know they, they just get 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 thrown out. You know, like uh, a, a lot a lot of these hello doctors cards or uh, you know anyway. So it, it's, it's actually quite an interesting collection. If you can uh, find these cards, sending it to all uh, every different destinations of the world, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Anyhow, okay. So um, uh, any more any more uh, presentations? Anybody want to say anything? Okay, right. Well, uh, we have a very entertaining evening. Uh, it's better than I thought. You know, at first. Uh, when when Susan Duncan contacted me, I said, "Oh my gosh, there's <laughs> nobody's interested in post history." And then, of course, Wayne, you know, you know, you know, turn turn up, and uh, you know, and uh, that was really, really very good to share your passion in postal stationery. And uh, I'm sure that we can round up some members to uh, uh, give you a helping hand. Um, uh, I think with with uh, with the sort of Hong Kong station. Anyhow, thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Wayne. Uh, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. I can see actually uh, 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 Dr. Prokop there. Uh, Dr. Prokop is the president of the uh, uh, FIAP as well as FIP. And uh, it, it's nice uh, to have him uh, uh, with us uh, actually throughout the whole almost two, an hour, two hours meeting. So with Dr. Prokop, would like to say a few words. Uh Good evening, uh, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Andrew, Susan, and Duncan Crew, Wayne, Charles, and I'm uh, sorry that uh, my connection was sometimes on and off. So uh, I may be uh, someone else uh, who's uh, making the presentation. It was uh, very interesting and uh, nice, uh, nice stories like the uh, Hong Kong uh, hello after the SARS uh, period and the uh, free uh, one person, one uh, letter or one person, one card. That's uh, quite uh, interesting. So thank you again for everyone uh, who participates and who uh, make the presentation. 
it was uh, very uh, pleasant and very uh, knowledgeable. And I always learn a lot when attending these uh, seminars. So thank you, everyone. And hopefully uh, you can continue uh, doing this every month. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, of course, the uh, thank you for uh, uh, FIAB to support us uh, every month. And uh, we shall see each, each of you very soon. Uh, certainly uh, before May, and we shall have a meeting, uh, say next uh, in, in March and April as well. Uh, so, um, uh, well, just say uh, you know, have a nice, have a nice day, have a nice morning, afternoon, and evening. And it's it's goodbye for me, and um, and see you next month. Okay, bye bye. 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 Bye.